Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table, funny enough, it's about the Phantom 4. Uh, what I'm gonna do, uh, we've all seen the videos by now and you know uh, we know what it looks like and yes, it was obviously the picture that I got sent yesterday, it was the, the, the aircraft and we all know the basics. I've kind of waited until the DJI website uh, has updated uh, and it has now. So I'm gonna sort of live, I haven't seen this before, look down the specs and just give my first impressions as to some of the actual specs and some of the things that, that, that sort of catch my eye there. But before we do that, it's the kitchen table. We always have a beverage when we're discussing drones. And as it's a new drone from DJI today, we ought to have a bit of a bit of an alcoholic one. Um, I'm drinking a, a Paydoc from France called Les Arbusiers. We're a very rare wanderer into the uh, old world. So um, cheers. Mm. Nice. Right, so let's have a look at the specs. Aircraft. Weight including battery, 1380 grams. That's impressive, bearing in mind the size of that battery. Um, max ascent speed, a very sporty six meters a second in sport mode, and a max descent speed of a very sporty four meters a second in sport mode. So it looks like they feel they've overcome the uh, vortex ring uh, issue, which is uh, where you descend into your own prop wash and the, 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 the rotors effectively stall out and you just come down faster. They've obviously engineered and tweaked things and tested it and reckon that four meters a second is okay. And the max speed is a 20 meters a second in sport mode. So pushing over 45 miles an hour, I believe. Uh, quite whether you'll get the quoted 28 minutes of, of battery time doing that, I doubt. Uh, GPS and GLONASS. Obstacle sensing system. So the range is two to 49 feet or up to 15 meters. And the operating environment is a surface with a clear pattern and adequate lighting. So this won't work in low light, indoors, in the dark, um, or in a dark woods. So that's something important to recognize. The camera, as we know, is the same guts as the Phantom 3 Pro camera, which is a bit disappointing. They have added a 128 frames per second 1080p option, which means you'll get some very silky uh, super slow-mo on that, which is good. Um, certainly happy with that. Um, other than that, it's all pretty much as we have come to expect. And again, operating temperature zero to 40 C, 32 to 104 Fahrenheit. Uh, charger, 17 volts, 100 watts gimbal. Yeah, pitch 90, minus 90 plus 30. Vision positioning system is gonna be, I would imagine, the same as the existing vision positioning system. Remote controller, 2.4, it's a light bridge. We, we know all that. That's gonna be pretty much the same, I would have thought. Uh, flight battery, the PH4 flight battery is a 15.2 volt, 5,350 milliamp hour 4S LiPo. It weighs 460 grams, that's a beast. Uh, the battery can operate minus 10 to plus 40 C or 14 to 104 Fahrenheit. So you can, you can take the battery into minus 10, you just can't do it with the aircraft. That strikes me as odd. Um, so those are the base specs. Um, We've got, uh, looking at the FAQ now. Uh, okay, some of the things that I like. I like this active track. I like the fact that you can point at, an, at, a, at, a, at a thing, a person, an object, and it will lock onto that, allowing you to, you know, perhaps not worry so much about keeping things in frame. If you're, if you're not used to that, this will help you if you're filming on your own and aren't using somebody to, to, to help you, a spotter or whatever. That's, I think, a really good feature. Um, Tap fly, so you're looking at the screen and you go, oh, go over there. Um, I think that's quite cool too. I'm wary in, in the moment of anything that encourages people to fly without keeping their eyes on the aircraft, without keeping their, their senses open for other air traffic and things like that. In the UK recently, we've had a few near misses involving drones of various types near big international airports. Um, I think it's very cool. I think the technology is excellent, but again, we're removing people from the loop, aren't we? Of, 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 of knowing how to fly things and quickly react in an emergency. 
there's a reason why it's quite good still to get your hands on those sticks and know what to do and be able to sort of make a, make a quick uh, move to get out. If you're an absolute beginner, this is, we're moving towards, you know, it's a bit like the e-hang I looked at the other day. It doesn't even come with a transmitter. Um, these things soon are pretty much going to be point to where you want it to go and it will do it. And they really are going to be flying cameras. The problem with them is unless they're limited to 400 feet high and say about uh, 1500 feet horizontally from you, people are going to blast them up to the ridiculous heights, three, 4,000 feet. And, and that's going to be a, be a problem. Perhaps I, I think that tech's cool. I just, I don't know. Um, other bits, there aren't, there aren't any other specs on the, on the, on the, on the main Phantom page now. That is the specs that I've done there. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they'll release more. They, they mention upgraded um, or uprated power motors and, and, and things, and they mention um, you know, we've got some quick release kind of props, but um, there's lots of videos up to watch. So yeah. Uh, what are my conclusions so far? Well, I'm not really disappointed. I think this, particularly in this, uh, the software side of it is very clever. And, and I think the, the, the sensor, one fantastic thing is now you cannot return to home and land up in a tree because you've forgotten to set your uh, height appropriate to the circumstances, which of course was always a problem before. People would, would fly it too far, it would get out of range or would lose signal and go into return to home and smack. Now it will stop doing that. It will try and avoid things. That's great. But is this sort of thing going to encourage more more people to you know take these kind of follow me selfies? Which is fine if it, but in the UK, for example, it's illegal to fly one of these and not maintain visual sight with it at all times. If you're mountain biking down a hill with this behind you, you can't do that. Um, and I I don't know I'm st I don't know whether we're still at the at the point where the the sensors are good enough. And and there aren't any on the sides. It's only the front, and they're relatively narrow. Uh, a 70 degree field of view I saw in one article. That's pretty much straight on only. So they also won't work with small things, thin things like wires. So power cables, telephone lines, even thin branches. If you're a big chunky pine tree or it's in the middle of somewhere with loads of leaves, fine. But I, I don't think it's fallible yet. And, and the, the early marketing from DJI kind of gives you that impression that it is. So things I think that are still gonna catch people out. Maybe they're keen to sell more of their new um, crash and we'll cover you for repairs policy that they brought out recently. So yeah, um, I'm just a bit disappointed we didn't have anything more radical. There's no retracts. I would have loved to them to sort of somehow have these swing up out the way or, or just, just clear a little bit more so you don't have the, the legs in shot if you're pirouetting. Oh, you can even, you know, turn the camera rather than the drone. But I guess they're using the, the software to move the drone for you. If you're an absolute beginner, um, never flown one before, a bit nervous, I think you hold out for a P4 because why would you? If, however, you've recently bought a P3 Pro, especially very recently, even that, that big price drop, and you've flown it a couple of times and you're getting confident with it, then I think you've got yourself a bargain. Pretty much almost identical camera um, hardware. And, you know, if you're going to up, if you're thinking of upgrading, don't forget, you're going to have to buy more of those big expensive batteries. They've changed the batteries again. Um, maybe that three minutes of extra flight time is worth it for you. I don't know. I think newcomers to the field are going to lap up the four and it's going to do very well. I think those of us who've got a three, maybe even some people who are hanging on to a two. Is this the one you're going to spend your money upgrading on? I'm not so sure. But anyway, there we go. Just some first impressions. As we get more specs. I'm going to try and dig more into the, the, the new motors and things like that. We'll maybe, maybe find out some more, but so far, very cool tech. A little bit disappointed on the actual design and nothing too radical in the airframe. Let's see what comes of it as the first reviews come in. Available from Apple stores of all places, but then we all know that Frank, the CEO of DJI, thinks of himself as the Chinese Apple, so maybe it's not such a surprise. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to me waffling on. I thought it'd be interesting just to go live. This is, you know, as I said, I haven't looked at these specs before. Um, it's just a few little bits of food for thought. Thank you as ever for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you again soon back on the kitchen table. Until then, cheers.